now we are entering into uh, looking at the abnormalities in ecg the first abnormality we are going to look at will be the chamber enlargement so although echocardiography is the best modality to diagnose chamber enlargement still ecg serves as a very simple and cost effective investigation especially in the peripheries and rural areas and semi urban areas to suspect a chamber enlargement with a simple uh, investigation like electrocardiogram so basic is uh, the ecg criteria of chamber hypertrophy as you know each uh, chamber enlargement diagnosis is done by a particular criteria from the ecg and this ecg criteria had been developed on the basis of autopsy studies so they did, they did autopsy and found out that a particular enlargement was there in that patient what was the ecg change in this way they have developed ecg criteria so we must always understand ecg criteria have got low sensitivity and high specificity that is uh, the ecg criteria has got a low sensitivity and specificity simply by this we mean that uh, if a particular uh, chamber enlargement is there in the electrocardiogram most often the chamber enlargement is there that's what the high specificity means the low sensitivity means the normal ecg does not rule out a chamber enlargement so that's what uh, we are trying to understand with the high low sensitivity and high specificity so we already told you echo is ideal investigation to diagnose chamber enlargement but definitely ecg gives an idea about when to dot and so for example the ecg shows a chamber enlargement definitely that patient will need an echocardiogram to uh, to do a detailed analysis of a particular chamber enlargement so before i go into the uh, criteria for diagnosing each chamber enlargement once again i emphasize that don't interpret an ecg without this basic uh, uh, standardization signal which includes 10 small squares otherwise called 1 millivolt standardization and the speed of recording 25 millimeters per second the criteria i am going to say for each chamber enlargement is going to be valid only when the ecg is recorded in 1 millivolt or 10 millimeter standardization and the ecg recorded at 25 millimeter per second speed so please always remember to see that before you apply the criteria i am going to tell you subsequently so first of all we are going to like to see the chamber enlargement in the form of atrial enlargement so once again it can be a left atrial enlargement or a right atrial enlargement briefly we saw that in our uh, measurement and we see little more detail in this atrial enlargement so i already told you the chamber enlargement that the normal depolarization of the atrium so both atrial depolarizations the uh, atrial depolarization impulse is going to come towards uh, inferiorly so l2 will show both right atrial and left atrial depolarization as a positive uh, complex so l2 the p wave is totally positive because the right atrium is activated initially the first half is right atrium and the terminal half is left atrium whereas in v1 it is a horizontal lead anterior and uh, right sided lead so right atrial depolarization will come towards it and left atrial depolarization will go away from it so that's why the v1 p wave is biphasic the initial component of the p wave representing right atrial enlargement terminal negative component is representing left atrial enlargement so these are the two leads we are going to see for the identification of chamber abnormalment so the p wave is going to be positive in l2 so it is biphasic in v1 as you have mentioned so the p wave is going to see we have told you about the number of 2.5 so whenever the p wave exceeds 2.5 in uh, height it is a right atrial enlargement when it exceeds 2.5 horizontally it is a left atrial enlargement and the tall and wide p wave is a biatrial enlargement so this is the criteria to diagnose right atrial enlargement that means the amplitude is more than 2.5 millivolt especially sometimes it's called p pulmonale because this p wave is more common in severe pulmonary stenosis and v1 you can see that here the initial component of the p wave is more than 1.5 millimeter so the p wave initial component of the p wave is more than 1.5 millimeter then also we can call that as um, right atrial enlargement so so this is the right atrial enlargement as we can see normally the right and left atrial enlargement almost occur simultaneously but the left atrial enlargement is little later than the right atrial enlargement the right atrial enlargement left atrium takes more time to complete its depolarization 
when compared to the uh, right atrial right atrial depolarization so left atrium completes depolarization little later it begins little later and ends little later as right atrium is early whenever there is a right atrial enlargement it is superimposed the right atrial enlargement is superimposed on this uh, particular uh, depolarization so right atrial, atrial enlargement increases the height of the p wave so the p wave height is more than 2.5 mm here so here the right atrial enlargement increases the height of the p wave so this is what we have told you so whenever the p wave height in l2 is more than 2.5 mm with a normal duration we have to suspect a right atrial enlargement so here you can see that here the width of the r wave is almost also increases but not visible because you can see the width of the r wave also can be little more but because the left atrium is uh, completing a depolarization late although the right atrial width is little more although the amplitude is more even the right atrium takes more time to uh, finish its depolarization but because the left atrial depolarization is much later here so you should not this right atrial enlargement although it increases the depolarization of right atrium it does not increase the width of the entire p wave because the left atrial depolarization is little later than the increased right atrial depolarization of right atrial enlargement so that's why this uh, uh, right atrial enlargement do not increase the width of the p wave it increases only the height of the p wave so as far as v1 is concerned i told you the more positive component so this should be more than 1.5 mm the positive component more than 1.5 mm and the height of the p wave in l2 is more than 2.5 mm with a normal duration the duration is not exceeding 2.5 small squares horizontally so this is a right atrial enlargement so the right atrial enlargement the rightward and anterior forces are exaggerated the rightward and anterior forces are exaggerated so the p wave in l2 is tall but not wide whereas the initial component of the p wave is exaggerated more than 1.5 millimeter 